Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Charlie Lees, and in today's video, I want to talk about Crohn's disease and osteoclitis, colitis, the urgent unmet need of these inflammatory bowel diseases, and the impact they have on an individual person's everyday life. These inflammatory bowel diseases can occur at any age of life. Typically though, the onset is in teenagers and young adulthood. And they're lifelong conditions, unfortunately, with no known cure. The impact on everyday life can be very marked. There are the debilitating physical symptoms, diarrhea, often with blood and urgency, as well as abdominal pain. There are extraintestinal manifestations such as joint aches, skin rashes, eye problems and mouth ulcers. And then systemic features such as night sweats and fevers, nausea and vomiting, loss of appetite and weight loss. The psychological burden can be very profound. Fatigue and mental exhaustion or brain flog are often explained to us by patients. And more there can be anxiety and depression, which we really must be on the lookout for and treat proactively. Unfortunately, because these are often progressive diseases, we see longer term complications of the disease. That might be hospitalizations for flares, it might be surgical resection for strictures or fistulas or resistant active disease, and sometimes the need for a stoma to be formed. But perhaps the impact on everyday life can be the biggest thing for an individual person. It might be spending more time in the bathroom, it might be the impact on studies and work, including absence and choice of job. There may be significant impact on relationships and sex life, intimacy, family planning and pregnancy, although these should all be hopefully normalizable. And food choices may be restricted to manage or avoid flares and other symptoms. So let's turn now to the urgent unmet need in inflammatory bowel disease. And here I've listed the 10 unmet needs to focus on. First, raising awareness. This is really important for people that are already living with inflammatory bowel disease and their families. It's important for people who may be presenting with inflammatory bowel disease, so they're aware of the symptoms. So primary care physicians and other doctors and healthcare practitioners are aware too. It's also important to raise Crohn's disease and osteoclitis colitis to the top of policymakers and funders' decision to provide best care and also funders of research as well. Really importantly, we should ensure equity of care. This means providing the same high level of care to every person with Crohn's disease and osteoclitis, colitis, no matter where they live in the world, no matter if they are young or old, rich or poor, white or black, male or female. We do need to break through the therapeutic ceiling. We do now have a good toolkit for both treating patients, we have good treatment strategies and good monitoring techniques, but they are imperfect. So whilst deploying them at the best of our current abilities will get us a lot further, we will still be a bit stuck. And this is our therapeutic ceiling. To break through it, we need our pharma partners along with biotech, academia and clinicians to all come together to develop and test better, more targeted, more effective and safer therapies and to combine therapies targeting multiple different pathways at once to gain better remission rates. But not just medical therapies, we really need to start thinking about microbial strategies and dietary therapies to complement or even replace in some individuals or in some phases of the disease to induce and completely maintain remission for the long term. A couple of areas where we have the biggest unmet need at the moment are with fistulas, where often we're limited in the drugs that are effective and surgical intervention is very frequently necessary. This can be very debilitating. But also strictures, where there is fibrosis and requiring a mechanical solution because all of our current drugs are anti-inflammation and we don't yet have any good anti-fibrotic strategies other than mechanical dilatation or stretching or resection of portions of the intestine. I talked briefly about monitoring. Our monitoring techniques and tools at the moment are pretty good for us as a whole, but they're not very patient focused. 
they're not very friendly to use, they're a bit cumbersome, and perhaps most importantly, they don't operate in the background of a person's life. Ideally, a monitoring system would be frictionless and passive so that it would detect early if a person is going into a flare state, alert them to do more formal testing, alert us so that we can start impact and influence treatment. Next, we can turn to precision medicine or personalized medicine, or rather our lack of it so far. If we could stratify patients with inflammatory bowel disease in terms of aggressive versus quiescent disease, in terms of predicting treatment response and failure, and who gets the complications of the drugs and the disease, then we would have something that looks like precision medicine. This is something we have been working on for some time. Yes, we have some rudimentary tools here, but we have a lot of extra work to do. And I think we will get there with a bit of time. This has mostly been talking about medicines and improving inflammation and monitoring it. But really, we need to think holistically to provide complete care for our patients, to think not just about intestinal healing and tight control, but also to think about early identification of psychosocial issues and tight control over these so we can look at a more complete healing. So that's pain, fatigue, urgency, sleep and intimacy, to name a few examples. And it needs good systems and strategies and much more support from psychologists and dietitians to help us provide this on the ground. And then finally today is thinking about a roadmap leading to the prevention and indeed the cure of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. We are starting to think about this in a systemic and joined up way. We are now starting to see very carefully curated cohorts of healthy people followed to disease and large data banks where we have people with samples from before they developed Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And the clues that are coming from these studies are moving closer to getting an idea of the steps that we might need to take to move towards prevention strategies. This is perhaps our moonshot. The thinking is more joined up than it has been. We will get there. And with all of these factors, we can look at addressing the unmet need in inflammatory bowel disease. There is a lot we can do today with our existing toolkit. There is more that we will be able to do with additional resource and funding and goodwill. That's it for today. Thanks for listening. Please do subscribe so that you're notified straight away for additional videos. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Stay safe. Goodbye.